Okay, now we're looking at the west end of Undercliff. We finished touring the east end. This is beginning the west end journey from the midpoint. And on this end, we uh, have a small engine house and uh, yard office and auxiliary yard right in our right foreground here. It's called Oasis Yard. Actually, Oasis in Cincinnati wasn't a yard but an interlocking, but on my railroad it's a yard, and the interlocking is QC Tower. Change things up. The branch going through the street is Eggleston Avenue branch, which is one of my favorite parts of Cincinnati, and it's uh, about 20% finished. Here's a little better shot of Oasis Yard. That's Oasis Yard office you're looking at, and this is QC Tower we're approaching, which controls the crossovers here at this large interlocking. This is where the Kentucky line comes in, the uh, street branches from the industrial branches come in, and the main line from the east or west comes in all at this point. This is a busy spot. We're looking at the LNN home signal from the uh, tramp, uh, track coming down the ramp there. In the background, by the way, is an industrial branch that comes off of the uh, lower street trackage. Okay, we're con continuing west along the main line with the LNN going up the ramp and in the foreground, and then the KNLE main, double track main line heading west around St. Betty's Church. Across the elevated track, which is reminiscent of the CNO bridge approach, not not nearly as long, but it's my my uh, tribute to that trackage, and on down uh, to the west end of uh, industrial section. So we're proceeding on around again to the west end, and um, the LN bridge is in the background. The uh, large brick warehouses. This winter's project my wife and I did. It's uh, my version of the Cincinnati Commercial Warehouse. It's kind of big. And then you go on down through um, the west side industrial area. The main line is elevated and the original main line is now the industrial track that's uh, on the bottom. So we're continuing on the westbound main here. It's double track through this portion. Cross over the southern track below there, and above the industrial, uh, which we'll come back and, and look at later. This is my first scratch built building, and uh, this is Sanford and Son Junkyard, Scrapyard, very busy spot. Let's pick these two up and take them back. The B&O interchange comes out from underneath Jeansco, and that's actually my sneak track that I can do my roundy round uh, train sh uh, open house trains on. Here we're looking at the west side industrial, old industrial area. Very busy spot, very difficult to switch. A lot of fun though. Here we're looking at the, the ending of the uh, west side industrial area. Now the west side luxury apartments, which are now pretty much ghetto. In the foreground is the uh, grain uh, terminal that served off a yard right around the bend. Continuing on west, we're looking at the St. Joe Yard Office. It's uh, actually Bob's hot dog stand kit. And to the left we have the uh, highway going down to the oil terminals and the red LED is a red, permanent red light. The truck never gets to get out on US 50, but it also indicates that the power auxiliary power supply is on for some tortoise switch machines. So when that LED is on, I know I got something else to turn off at night that's not tied to the master switch. Okay, we're looking at the east end of St. Joe Yard, which is the industry support yard for our, these riverside industries, oil terminals, green elevators, salt terminal, fertilizer terminal. Um, I have a 
uh, maybe 25-30% finish on this area, the cement plant, a uh, cement terminal I should say. And this is the support yard you're looking at now for, with the cars that are delivered for these industries. This is Cosmos Cement, which is part of the you know, St. Joe complex, and then the Valvoline Oil Company is the last industry I was able to model. There should be a couple more if I had, which we'll fix that in the new new version. And then we go right into the Great Miami River Bridge, which is actually six structures, but I felt three was enough. And actually, this is modeled from photographs, and again, a backdrop by a local modeler, John Lesterman. Those were three Walthers, double track bridges, and it's pretty close to the actual. And then we cross uh, State Route 128 and past uh, another Bob Lawson created scene for my railroad, Beavis Towing. And as we go behind that, we enter West Staging, which is the end of the visible railroad. Now we're looking at the Plum Street Industrial Area. And one of the first things I finished, in, or not totally finished, but pretty finished, and one of my favorite spots. It takes a couple of hours to switch this every session and usually fight over this one. Mostly uh, the majority of traffic is produce but there is some boxcar and other traffic, uh, some scrap yards that are served out of here. Yeah, coffee, uh, coffee plant and uh, plumbing warehouse. Another angle of the Plum Street area with the Swift Meat Plant in the very foreground and the produce yards, uh, warehouses and some businesses and other industries. Very compact, congested area. A lot of traffic here. One more, vision, one more view of uh, Plum Street area. The somewhat finished buildings that are uh, framing it. Seems like I never get back to doing, finishing these. They're close. Another view of the Plum Street area, the shingling sign my wife hand painted. So it, it's going to be here forever. Simpson Foods, Park Coffee, Keitel Plumbing, the local downtown gas station, and some more in the street uh, trackage. This is where we enter the street trackage that goes down 2nd Street or now Pete Rose Way. As now we're going down the street trackage that uh, connects with the other industries outside the Plum Street District. The street trackage actually serves as an industrial lead and it also connects to the Southern Railway. In the Southern we run a transfer run out of the Southern and we also run a DT&I auto parts train with the big auto racks and auto parts cars right down the street which is prototype, um, prototypical for Cincinnati in that era. And, and they actually run through there pretty well. The big cars look kind of strange coming down the street, but it is correct. Here we're looking at the main line going overhead in the southern below and the street trackage in the foreground. A lot going on here.
the chance to use your word in a second. Yeah, there's I don't know, quite a few, 20, 30? Yeah. If you had more mainland, you could get a lot more out of the main you know, get a lot more. Yeah. Right. 